speak about it. Touched on kind of just making or bringing like the best sorts of equipment that you can into just like your space and your area and, and making sure that it's there for your disposal. But like a lot of people probably look at this stuff and they see, oh, I've got to get these speakers when they cost eight bills and yeah. I've got to get this monitor and it costs I've, this and I've that. Done that. How, how, how well can you put together a home studio that will do the job without having to spend racks? You know what's mad? I've spent it? I've spent money and um, and over thousands thousands and thousands of pounds on equipment because at the time it wasn't as easy as just having your laptop and headphones. Mm. Today you can just have your laptop and headphones. Yeah. And a producer will I could be a new producer with my laptop, my headphones, even iPad. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And mm. just are uh, you want to make a beat? Yeah, I'm making a beat. Are you talking to me or whatever? You're chilling in the room, I say yeah. Hook that up to the orcs, play it. Mm. Man's like yeah, this is a tune. I heard Kanye, <laughs> I heard Kanye uses like garage bands, bro. Them thing there, like. <laughs> <laughs> you get me, but I don't use it though. But it's, yeah. I, I do it if I have ideas and it's like yo, let me get something down. down. Yeah, you get me, but like more time, like, I beatbox into my phone ideas. Mm. I, I just beatbox the ideas down in that, but um. You don't have to buy a whole load of equipment. You mm. really don't. Mm. You, um, I, I say, like, really and truly, if you want to get your ideas out, get a, a computer, whether it be a full PC with, like, the little tower, yeah. desktop thing, or you've got, like, a laptop, uh, headphones, and get also uh, an audio interface which is like a little sound card box thing mm. where you can plug headphones in your mic into usually it's a usb thing so it plugs into the computer straight it's powered mm. by the computer uh microphone well unless you're a producer only mm. but um even that though as a producer get a microphone get a mic, yeah. take sounds put it into your beats mm. it'll sound different you know what Timberland I mean? flip. yeah yeah Timberland that's roll. i learned a lot of that stuff like wanting to freestyle my ideas and put them things down like from timberland last like, mm. I, I was into a lot of timberland stuff mm. when i was younger definitely cool and like one thing that I've noticed quite recently in terms of the music scene, obviously the music scene in the UK is doing very well and there's a lot of people just coming up and doing amazing things left, right and centre, but then that kind of then creates this, this perception that I can just like, I can make a banger mm -hmm. and my life's going to change tomorrow. Oh, it no. can. Yeah, it can. It can, but what, what, what is the reality behind the, the, <laughs> the industry and how it works and, and in, terms of, in terms of like actually creating the music and like like even with myself sometimes sometimes i thought like we like making an album I've, I've made a song i'm like yeah this this song's gonna change my life but there's no guarantees yeah it's not I mean? it's there's, not my there's no guarantees it's really not and and it's it's hard to work around it where you kind of see a man just make one tune and then next thing you know he's like charting and and and, and obviously it's inspirational it's something that should like obviously i'm all for like really aiming as high as possible and, 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 and knowing that nothing is impossible mm. but there are realities to 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 kind of um, the industry that, that kind of we work in so um, is that is there anything that you can any light that you can shed on on someone who does feel this burning passion to make music and knows that they have a song or they have a concept or they have something which we could potentially take them to the next level and how to then micromanage their expectations and, and know how to kind of place their products um, kind of um, well enough to be seen well, first thing I would say is because we are in an era where everything, everybody wants things now and everyone's got short attention spans or the majority of the people do, it's very important to make sure that your mental health is in check. Absolutely. Okay, because a lot of people in the music industry suffer from bad mental health problems because it's not once they've made it, it's that it, it grows from when they are on the journey mm. because that constant voice with it's not even schizophrenia like it's not even that it's a voice yourself like a self-doubt telling you it's gonna work and then maybe it doesn't work and then after the voice becomes the opposite yeah. it's like don't do it it's not gonna work it's mm. not gonna work mm. and then you're constantly fighting yourself then you've got people around you telling you it might not work mm. or some people telling you it would mm. and then maybe your voice is telling you it doesn't yeah. and then like you know the like seriously bro 
it's there's a high percentage in the music business of people that suffer with bad mental health mm. and they just we don't express it enough mm. we don't express it and luckily there's been people like Stormzy for example who's come out and he we'll said you know what I mean and that's good because not many people spoke about it I know I made a song I made a song like in 2009 where I'm talking about being suicidal and that and mm. I didn't tell anybody music is therapeutic release, yeah. you know music, as therapeutic music may be the the, the come up is like it's heaviest it, it, it can really weigh someone down so you know to kind of go back and answer your question properly it's more down to um what you don't see you need to question because we can look at a rams who's just kind of come out with you know the barking tune and family tree and what's the one that sounded like notes was on the mic instead I don't know <laughs> but you know but hey I like Family Tree I'm just saying yeah, I like it but <laughs> it, there was one that sounded like notes that's what I'm saying mm. and um, basically like we don't see what Rams probably went through you know what I mean I don't know if he's if he he's probably going through a lot now because yeah, the amount of the attention the yeah, amount of stuff that people are saying about him the mm. good and the bad yeah. and you know sometimes you know we may have so many good things going on in our lives as musicians but that one, one bad, bad comment thing, yeah. you know Sticks. yeah that bad comment on YouTube or the fact that you you know the, the when you look at like the dislike to like ratio yeah. and like it's it looks like a cigarette like you know, <laughs> you know it's like it, the majority of is likes but then you've got enough for you to really see that it's disliked a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. and that could hurt you mm. that could hurt man mm. and and um I definitely feel like artists need to understand that overnight success really can take something like five, ten years. Exactly that. People of only grinding in underneath, you know what I mean? Yeah. Artist development is something of the past now for most labels, but that was a big deal. Do mm. you had people, you had teams that would teach you how to do interviews, how to, how to yeah, how to perform, how you, how you and your group, you're going to step forward and then step back, <laughs> you know, the reaching ground. You know, like, like those all artists developed before, before them groups come out and that, you know what I mean? Mm. You think these R&B groups, they're singing in the rain just because they, they done the thing. Man was out here practicing like yeah. in a dry room and it's like, yo, guys, when we get in the rain, when they turn that hose on, you know, Make y'all going to be crazy. Yeah, so man have to splash the puddle and all of this stuff. <laughs> That's all artist development. You don't get that anymore. Yeah, so man yeah. just come out and, and then, yeah. you know, and then the fans as well, they're like, oh, you got a million views. That must mean you got like at least half a million pounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> at least half a million pounds. It's like, man's still at the bus stop waiting for the 58 to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Man's still waiting for that 58 to come like, mm-hmm. obviously people who are not from Wolfram Forest and Forest Gate or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Man's still waiting for the bus. Like, but like, if you're smart, you're saving your money and you're still waiting for the bus. But the point I'm making is, it's very easy to look at the views and all these things and think, yeah, this person busts quickly. Mm. It's not the case, man. Absolutely. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of work that needs to happen before a man can even get in his foot in the door, let alone be in the spotlight. Mm. And that's something that I've found in terms of like myself as well, kind of working over the past four or five years on, on my craft. Like, just getting your foot in the door is getting your foot in the door, but then it's like, you've got to build on that. You've got to literally be in people's faces. You've got to make sure that all because one thing doesn't work doesn't mean that your whole yeah your whole brand doesn't work you yeah. know what I mean you've got to literally be at it do you know what I mean yeah. and I feel like that's a mentality that not enough people perhaps have or they they, they, they see that one thing's going to go in a particular way and it doesn't go that way and then they're demoralised and then they don't know how to then go about it they don't know what the next move is and there's a lot of sacrifices that have to go into being an artist in terms of time in terms of energy in terms of in terms of money as well it beats you up mentally mm. and emotionally it can beat you up man mm. if you're not ready for it it can really hurt you and when you've got people that you believed believed in you mm. and then you see their kind of their support is fading as well mm. that can hurt mm. that can hurt it could be your parents it could be your cousins friends whatever mm. and then you realise they're not coming when they stop coming to your shows in the beginning everyone's like yeah I'm gonna come man support and then like you know it could be as little as 
three years go by and it's like, ah, like, you mean like, oh yeah, bro, got another show. And it's like, yeah, all right, all right, cool. I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll let like, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, that, <laughs> and then it becomes a, you, you don't, you don't put them in a WhatsApp broadcast anymore. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, it just don't happen anymore. And then you start doubting yourself. But it's it's definitely about being stern and and, mm. and being firm. And, you know, you got to pick yourself back up. And mm. then, you know what the maddest thing is? we got to play confident. Mm. Depending on the kind of music you do as well as rappers, mm. it's all about that bravado and yeah. that. So you got to be bragging like, yeah, I've been doing this thing, you <laughs> get me? Yeah. And it's like, you don't know, man's been like out here just sweating, thinking, nah, this one ain't right. Oh, they don't believe in me. I can't even get my people to come to my own video shoot. And mm. you know what I mean? And then, and then like once you bust everyone's your friend again yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean yeah. and and, and fact. it's crazy bruv fact, fact it's crazy fact. now um, one thing that I find interesting about you is like your presence on social media uh-huh. um, two different uh, yeah. two different sort of angles yeah. one you're verified yeah and, and, and you kind of um, you kind of Push out this, like, yeah, I'm verified, but I ain't got bare followers. Yeah. Don't ask me no questions. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> the no DMs, <laughs> the DMs, bro. Yeah. The DMs, I wish I knew the guy's name, yeah. One person messaged me today mm. and said, he, like, I, I commented someone's, um, uh, one, like I'm just bait or one of them posts it was something funny and yeah like my comments gonna say, they get, get like you're in a like, few comments yeah you, you see my name the troublemaker <laughs> I troll sometimes innit I'm a bit of a troll I'm a bit of a troll I, I, I clocked a, a little algorithm there like if, <laughs> if you know seriously yeah I'm saying yeah, it innit yeah. for the verified folks anyway innit like if you if you want more followers, comment because how Instagram's algorithm works, all the comments and stuff top. goes to the top. So you comment, say something kind of funny, people like it, people want to know who you are, they follow you. Mm. And then like, when I started doing that, I was like, all right, cool, followers are growing because I'm not dropping anything right now. People want to know who I am, cool, I've got my website on my bio or mm. they just go for my page. Mm. But yeah, this one guy who commented and, and like, someone must have said, oh, why are you verified? And I just rolled my eyes at it. <laughs> And then the guy so commented, you, this guy commented and he responded to the guy and he said, nah, he's probably one of those behind the scenes man that don't really like to get seen, but he does work. He puts his work in. Mm. I said, bro, you, sir, are the guy. <laughs> You're smart. Because yeah, that's yeah. what I tell people all the time. Yeah, They're like, yeah. how are you verified and you ain't got this much followers? Bro, I don't know myself. <laughs> now, I'm guessing I got my credentials in it. I do my job, but at the same time, I don't necessarily go out of my way to get verified, bro. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. get me? If I could, I like would be... A lot be... of people pay, put a lot of, a lot of onus and a lot of um, yeah, man. significance on, on yeah, that, man. getting a blue and ticket and blah, 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 and kind of lose the fact that they need to be actually right. doing the work and to it's, make sure that... And it's because... Means. People are looking at the price and not the value there today. Go. There's a difference between price and value and cost. Mm. Mm. So, you know, the price is the price. The, the price is how much somebody spent mm. for it. You know, the numbers. Mm. The value is what it means what to someone. Worth. You get yeah. me what it's worth. So, if they're looking at, like, people want to buy my account from me and that. Mm. You get me? They're like, let me buy your account. It's like, are you mad? Like, <laughs> why are you asking Beyonce for an account? I'm not the same with Beyonce, but have you asked Beyonce for an account? You get me? All right, maybe not Beyonce. Ask, I don't know, AJ Tracy or someone. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, why are you asking me for my account? And then it's like, do you know the kind of stuff I do out here? I, I deserve this badge even though I didn't ask for it like I literally got a phone call and uh, they were like yo have you checked your Instagram I was like no I was like check your Instagram bro I was like alright cool they were like hold on I'll put you on loudspeaker I'm checking on my phone like, rot it <laughs> you get me I was like also, like, like the important does, question is like does it increase the amount of female attention does it real important question <laughs> <laughs> no 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 you know I'll be honest with you like, I tell people especially man they're like oh you must get bare news no nope. <laughs> Don't get news. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't. <laughs> no. I don't get news. Yeah, I, yeah. I tell you this though, like yeah. definitely, it it definitely brings up a lot of questions, and then mm. people want to know, and then sometimes if I feel right, I'll break it down 
very quickly and say, look, I do my work, Google my name, Google me, and you'll find that I've been involved in this, that, and the other, you know, for at least the last 10 years. That's it, that's it. And I'd say, like, obviously, I wish that we can, I say it probably at the end of every episode, I wish we had a lot more time to sit and talk, because there's a lot of things that you even, that we'd even get into in terms of, like, even the DJing and Uh, radio and all that sort of stuff. But I guess, um, speak about it, it's just a platform for us to kind of um, shed some light on on our stories, on our journeys, and illuminate, illuminate the path yeah. for people who perhaps want to go down go down the routes that, that that kind of you or any other guest that I do have on the show. I'm still on a come on, penny. You know I mean, you everyone's still I mean? everyone's still, still kind of um, plugging away. Shout out to Nathan and, Hector as well, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. The, 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 he's got some gems. Yeah, man. He, we all nice. played a part in like. A oh, new step in someone's career, you know what I yeah, mean? Uh, my absolutely. first video on MTV, Nathan was involved in that. Mm. That was his first TV music video, mm. and I see he was on here as well. So big up Nathan. Yeah, yeah. man, absolutely. And obviously, um, we're gonna have like maybe four or five episodes to speak about it, um, depending on kind of the feedback from you guys. Um, and, and how much you like it, there might be more. There might, you know what I mean? So um, I'm really hoping that you have. You have kind of left this video with with some insight into the music industry, what it's really like, not just what you see from the outside looking in. I really hope that you've learned some things and things that you kind of be able to apply, whether it is you're, you're a producer, you're an artist, or you're trying to get into the the industry in general. And um, yeah, man, again, Shem, Shemzy Anthony, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? There was a big, big, <laughs> big Selinski, too big heavy, Selinski. big Shem from E10. Oh, well, it's whatever, man. Yeah, you know, what I mean? so you, so you know when you've been alive long enough, you go for bare different nicknames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know. All right, so all right. But yeah, thanks again for coming through, and um, hopefully make the, the show grows yeah, and we can kind it, of have you on another. Speak about it. Yeah. Let me keep it moving. Speak about it. Thank you guys very much. Love.